Halifax, Nova Scotia, to much of the world, the city is linked to the sinking of the Titanic because many of its victims' bodies were brought here to Halifax to be buried. But residents of Halifax, and Canadians in general, associate the city with an even more deadly maritime disaster and explosion in 1917 after a seemingly minor harbour collision between a French munitions ship and a Norwegian vessel carrying food aid to Belgium. The blast levelled much of the north end of the city, killed about 2,000 people and injured perhaps 10,000 others, including nearly 600 people who were blinded, mainly by shattered glass. The explosion brought the terror and death of World War I to North America. Some experts say that not until the first atomic bomb was dropped over Hiroshima did the world witness a man-made explosion that produced more casualties, covered a larger area, destroyed more property and produced more explosive force. Not by coincidence, scientists on the Manhattan Project studied the Halifax disaster to predict the potential effects of their weapons. Reminders of the explosion's centennial were impossible to escape this week. Two more histories have been added to the dozens of other books, including one of Canada's best-known novels, On the Disaster. Plays, special exhibitions, films and events, as well as shop windows commemorating the anniversary, are spread throughout the city. On Wednesday morning, as is the case every December. 6. A crowd gathered amid heavy rain in the heart of the blast zone, a portion of which was left unbuilt to serve as a memorial park. Here in Halifax there's almost been perverse civic pride in the blast in the sense it shows we can face extreme hardship, said Roger Marsters, the curator of marine history at the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic. Halifax's unusually large, deep and easy-to-protect natural harbour led the British to build a fortress here in 1749, and Canada to found its navy in its harbour in 1910. But the outbreak of World War I in 1914 transformed the city. About 10,000 to 20,000 people poured into a place with a population of about 47,000 people. Canadian troops and supplies passed through the port on their way to Europe while the injured were sent back to convalesce in city hospitals. The First World War sort of gave Halifax a renewed sense of purpose overnight, Mr. Marsters said. The colliding ships had both arrived from New York. There, under tight control, the French-owned Mont Blanc had been stuffed with an array of military explosives and had barrels of benzol, a volatile aviation fuel, added for good measure. The IMO, from neutral Norway, had been chartered by a group founded by the future President Herbert Hoover and provided wartime food aid to Belgium. To try to ward off German U-boats, the IMO bore signs reading, Belgium Relief, along its sides. While passing through the only narrow section of the harbour, the IMO's stern struck the Mont Blanc's bow. The IMO was largely undamaged but a fire broke out on the floating bomb that was the Mont Blanc. Its crew fled in lifeboats as the crippled ship drifted toward the Halifax shoreline.